Hello everybody and welcome to the stream. My name is Technomagus and today we are playing Sentinels of the Multiverse, the video game. This is a game that is basically a direct translation of the Sentinels of the Multiverse tabletop game, which is the greatest team-based, cooperative-focused, fixed-deck superhero game ever made. But I know what you're going to say. It's the only team-based, fully cooperative, blah 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 game ever made and that is why no one plays with you at the playground little Timmy alright anyway so basically what Sentinels of the Multiverse is uh, we're going to skip the tutorial because I already know how to play but anyway so the way Sentinels of the Multiverse works you have a villain that you choose uh, we can choose between Baron Blade um, Citizen Dawn Grand Warlord Voss or Omnitron has a little difficulty meter lets you know how approximately how difficult the uh, or the villain is to fight. Um, we have a team of ten heroes from um, who are all very similar to well-established heroes, but have their own unique quirks. For example, um, Absolute Zero here is uh, focuses on fire and ice type abilities, um, very similar to like Iceman. But he has uh, reactionary effects that uh, boost hit, or that cause him to do other stuff when he gets hit with certain elements. Bunker here is think kind of like Iron Man. Um, he's a guy in a mech suit and he has lots of firepower. Well, actually, more along the lines of War Machine, and so on. Um, Fanatic is uh, an angel-like character who has lots of uh, radiant or holy type damage and is very zealous in her work. Um, we have Haka. He's kind of like the Hulk, only smart, um, but he ha he can dish out and receive a lot of damage. Uh, we have Legacy. He's the Superman analog, but instead of being well, he's a super strong guy, but he also has uh, he mostly focuses on buffing and protecting the team as opposed to actually dealing a lot of damage himself. Um, Ra burns things with fire. Enough said. Um, Tachyon is a speedster, kind of like Quicksilver or the Flash. Uh, she plays, she can draw and play a lot of cards in a single turn, but she also is pretty fragile, so you have to protect her. Uh, Tempest is like Aquaman crossed with Thor with, uh, without any of the suck attached. Um, he has a lot of area of effect, uh, and also, um, or, and is good for suppression, but he hits, he doesn't hit very hard. Then we have the Visionary, who's a psychic, kind of along the lines of, like, Professor Xavier. She does a lot of manipulation. She doesn't really hit... Uh, she has, like, almost no damage effects herself, but she can, like, manipulate other characters' decks to have them draw extra cards or change up what the villain's going to be playing and stuff like that. And then finally, the Wraith. Think Batman, only a girl. And then we have environments. Uh, we have Insula Primalis, uh, which is basically, like, the Savage Land from uh, X-Men. There's Megaopolis, which is basically the city, think Metropolis from D.C. The Ruins of Atlantis, enough said. Uh, and then finally, the Wagner Mars Base, which is a space station with its own unique abilities. Um, but basically, you start off by choosing a villain, so we'll go with Baron Blade, because he is uh, he's generally a pretty simple villain. Then you choose a team of heroes. You can pick anywhere from three to five heroes, um, whoever you want to go with, it doesn't matter. Each hero has their own unique skills, like some heroes are good for tanking damage, such as Haka and Legacy, buffing the team, mainly Legacy, at least in the core set. Um, though Visionary is also a good uh, team uh, support because of her deck manipulation. Then you have AoE for Tempest and Tachyon, and then uh, hard damage, uh, Absolute Zero, Bunker, Fnatic, Ra, and Haka are all good uh, DPS, basically. Though Z Absolute Zero and Bunker require a bit of setup, and Fnatic needs to hurt herself a lot to really be effective. So, we'll do, um, we'll do the what's called the Freedom Five, the five core heroes. That is Legacy, Bunker, uh, Absolute Zero, Tachyon, no, come on, stop dragging, Tachyon, and the Wraith. Um, and then we choose our environment. We'll go to Insula Primalis. That, this is basically the tutorial, uh, is Baron Blade versus the Freedom Five at the Insula Primalis. We go ahead and hit Fight, and we get a nice little intro cutscene.
All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So the way this works is the villain deck is on autopilot. Um, he starts off with a mobile defense platform that makes him immune to damage, and then every turn, the villain always goes first. He plays a card for free. Uh, you do whatever is instructed on the card, and then turn passes to the heroes. The heroes go in order. I have Legacy first, then Bunker, Zero, Tachyon, and the Wraith. Um, now, in this case, he played a second one of these mobile defense platforms, which is a pain in the neck, because while these things are out, he can't take damage, which means I can't hurt him. So we'll need to start uh, working on that. Um, now, as for the heroes, the heroes start with four cards in their hand. There are no mulligans. There, there is no running out and decking yourself. If you run out of cards in your deck, you just reshuffle your deck and keep going. You don't lose because you ran out of cards. You lose because the villain drops the moon on you. Uh, that's what Baron Blade is doing. Basically, he his goal is to get 15 cards into his discard pile at the start of his turn, and that means that he succeeded in pulling the moon into the earth and we all die. So we need to stop that. Um, right now, though, Legacy doesn't really have any damage that he can put out, so we'll just go ahead and give him Fortitude, which reduces damage he takes, and we'll use his power, um, which causes him to boost all damage that heroes deal until his next turn. Oh, hey, there's some damage. Alright, so let's see. Bunker... Um, well, we'll go ahead and give Bunker some defense mode as well, and just have him use his power to draw a card. Uh, basically, you're allowed to play one card per turn, and you draw or use one power per turn, and then draw one card at the end. Uh, in this case, though, Bunker's power, or his core power, lets him draw an extra card. So he can, uh, and this, and he uses these extra cards to fuel his attacks. Uh, let's see, so absolute zero. Um, we'll go ahead and get him a module. So he draws a card, he gets to search his deck for a module, which he has eight of them. Um, four of each type. Now these modules are limited, meaning he can only have one of them in play at a time, but we want to get them out of his deck so that he doesn't draw them later. And now he gets to play an extra card because of that, so we'll go ahead and do it again. Alright, so let's go ahead and play the cold module. So what this does is, instead of taking cold damage, he heals for that much instead. But right now I can't do anything with it, so we're just going to skip the power phase, because his power is to hurt himself. Um, I can have him hurt himself for cold. So, basically, instead of taking one damage, he heals himself, but he's already at max health, so it doesn't do anything. Okay. All right, Tachyon. So let's go ahead and what do we have here? Um, she doesn't really have a lot she can do. What is this? Yeah. So actually, here's what we'll do. We will play Pushing the Limits. Uh, pushing the Limits lets her play an extra card each turn and lets her draw an extra card each turn. Um, but she has to hurt herself every turn she wants to keep it in play. But this is fine. Um, she can take it for a little bit. And of course, we'll just use our extra card play to get some, to deal some damage and start breaking one of these mobile defense platforms. And then her power, as she gets to peek at her top card, and we want to get rid of that. We don't need it. So let's go ahead and draw some more. No, oh, great. She just gets another one anyway. All right. So Wraith. Let's go ahead and. Well, she doesn't really have anything useful, so we'll just go ahead and drop Stun Bombs, which lets us redirect damage. And then she's just going to Stealth, which gives her damage reduction on the next time she gets she would get hit. Alright, so now that the heroes and the villain have taken their turn, we go to the Environment, which says at the end of the Environment turn, each hero may destroy one of their uh, equipment, otherwise they take 5 damage. I don't care about this, because we can just blow it up next turn, so... Everybody's going to be taking damage, which is fine. Um, so Legacy takes damage, sure. But because of his fortitude, he, it's reduced. Bunker takes damage, it's reduced. Absolute Zero takes damage, it's full, which is fine. Tachyon takes full damage. And Wraith, ta Wraith would take full damage, but her damage reduction prevented two of that, so she didn't have to worry about it. Now we're back to Baron Blade for the next round. So this makes him... Uh, so he hits everybody for damage. All right, don't, you can hit the choose for me when you don't care. So, uh, yes, Tachyon is considered lowest HP. 
So it redirects to the highest health, which is Legacy. Now, of course, um, Legacy and Baron Blade are considered nemesis, which means that they deal increased damage to each other. All right. And now he gets a power promote turret, which at the end of the turn deals each hero two damage, and then damage dealt by this card is increased by one for each mobile defense platform in play. That's kind of annoying. All right, so we'll have Wraith first. She's lowest, so it'll get redirected over to Legacy. Um, and, of course, the damage is reduced by two, one for the smoke bombs, one for fortitude, so Legacy only takes two damage. Of course, everybody else is taking full damage, which sucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, don't care. Because of the mobile defense platforms in play, the remote turret deals increased damage, which kind of sucks. All right, but now we're back to Legacy's turn. So now we get to play this card, Inspiring Presence. What it does is each hero regains one health. Uh, we don't care the order. But it also gives a permanent plus one damage buff to all heroes. So we'll go ahead and give them now a plus two damage buff. All right, so now we have Bunker. Um, hmm. Let's see, what is this? Oh, yeah, we'll go ahead and play the Grenade Launcher. So what the Grenade Launcher does is he gets to deal damage to three targets. He gets two, two, and then one. So, of course, with the plus two damage effects, uh, this now deals four damage. And we'll deal another four damage here. And then three damage here. Now he has to choose three separate targets, unfortunately. And of course, being that the Grenade Launcher is limited, he can only have one out. Alright, so let's go ahead and we'll play a Cryo Chamber. Um, what this does is cold damage absolute zero takes is plus one, fire damage he takes is minus one, and he can deal himself five fire damage and destroy it, basically coming out of the Cryo Chamber, which is useful with the Isothermic Transducer. Uh, right now, though, he's just going to hit himself for a bunch of cold damage to regain some health. Alright, so now Tachyon... Yeah, she can hit herself for four. Alright, so... Let's go ahead first and... Supersonic Response, hit this... So she gets to destroy the remote turret, so we don't have to deal with that anymore. Um, and then, with our second play, she'll go ahead and punch this for three more. Ooh, and she draws a card, which is something that we want. Alright, and then, let's go ahead and... Um, we do not want to draw, or discard that, because we want to draw that. Draw The more cards Tachyon has access to, the more damage she can deal. And now back to the Wraith, so... So we definitely want her throwing knives out, because now she can deal damage to multiple targets. So we'll go ahead and shoot this for three damage. So that's one of the defense platforms down. Shoot the other platform, drop it down to three. And then we can shoot Baron Blade, but because of the defense platforms out, he can't take any damage. All right. So now it's back to the environment turn. River of Lava triggers, so now we can all... We can have our characters mill three cards apiece, which we want to, to get rid of River of Lava. Now we don't have to deal with it anymore. At least for now. Alright, so now the next card comes out. Obsidian Field. This is a global buff, similar to Legacy's Galvanize, but it affects everyone, and Baron Blade's uh, stuff included. So this could potentially be dangerous. Oh, and now Baron Blade gets personal damage reduction. Good job. Alright, so let me get rid of that. Hero damage boost. Alright, so let's go ahead and give Legacy a personal damage buff, and then give the team the damage buff. Of course, Legacy is never going to take advantage of it, but eh. And no, we do not want to discard two cards. We want to keep this Obsidian Field out. Alright, so let's go ahead and put out an ammo drop. So now, what ammo drop does is every time a villain card uh, is destroyed, Bunker gets to draw a card. So we'll go ahead and blow this up. 
and Bunker draws a card, and he gets External Combustion, which is a area of effect. So let's go ahead and hit Baron Blade for another four. And we don't want to hit any of our own guys, so we'll just leave that as it is. And Bunker wants to keep his cards in hand. And then Absolute Zero. Let's go ahead and... Hmm... Go ahead and drop Impale on Baron Blade. So what this does, at the beginning of each of Absolute Zero's turn, he deals two cold damage to Baron Blade, which will be buffed by Legacy. And then we'll just have Absolute Zero heal himself. And no, we want to keep the Obsidian Field out. And... Uh... Yeah, we'll keep it out for one more turn. No, this is getting really dangerous. Alright, so let's go ahead and draw some cards. Um, and then we'll discard... We can discard these Sucker Punches, because we don't really need them. And then for our second card play, what's this? And yeah, we'll Blinding Speed. So I get to blow up an ongoing card, so we'll blow up Baron Blade's damage re uh, reduction. Which lets Bunker draw a card. And then let's peek at the top card, which is... yeah, we don't need that. Now, because five burst cards entered Tachyon's discard pile in a single turn, we unlocked her alternate promo self, uh, the Super Scientist Tachyon, which has a different power, different starting health total, and a different power. So, helpful. Um, we basically gives a different way, method of playing. And uh, no, Tachyon does not want to discard two cards. All right, so let's see here. And Wraith will just draw a bunch of cards. So, Stun Bolt, Inventory Barrage, Throwing Knives, and another Inventory Barrage. Now we have to discard two, so we'll, we can get rid of one of these Inventory Barrages. Uh, what it does is it blows up all of Wraith's equipment to deal twice that much damage to a single enemy. And then we can get rid of one of these Throwing Knives, because we already got one out. And let's go ahead and deal some damage to Blade. And that's all we're dealing damage to, because we're not hitting our own guys. Alright, so back to the Insula Primalis, which now brings up another Obsidian Field. So now this is getting kind of dangerous. Nope. Just healed himself. Great. And he doesn't do anything until, uh, because he doesn't have any heroes out, or he doesn't have any uh, minions out. He's just trying to pull the moon into the into the earth. All right, so let's go ahead and so we'll go ahead and have Legacy punch Baron Blade. So now, because Baron Blade is his nemesis, he gets the uh, bonus bonus damage, and he also gets bonus from his own inspiring presence and surge of strength and the Obsidian Field. So he's dealing eight damage which is basically 20% of Baron Blade's health. Alright, so let's go ahead and galvanize. And we still do not want to discard cards because this is ex significantly accelerating the clock. Now, as for Bunker... Um, right now, I think what we need to do is we need to get him into recharge mode. So what this does is he's not allowed to play or use powers, but he gets to draw an extra card each turn. So this will allow him... Uh, so for this turn, he gets to draw two cards, and then each turn thereafter, he gets to draw three. Um, because if you skip playing a card and using a power, you get to draw an, a bonus card. All right, so now what we want to do is get this the isothermic transducer out. Uh, what this does is when Absolute Zero takes fire damage, he gets to react by dealing that much cold damage to whatever he wants. So now we'll go ahead and have him hit himself with fire. Now because of the cryo chamber and 
uh, or because of the cryo chamber, the damage is reduced a little bit, but it's also significantly boosted. So he hits himself for four, which reacts. Now he gets to deal eight cold damage. Oh, look, there goes another chunk of Baron Blade's health. And, of course, Absolute Zero does not want to discard any cards. And, no, Tachyon does not want to take any damage this turn. Because we already have another Pushing the Limits. Though, actually, um, let's see here. How many bursts do we have? Oops. So we can click here to look at our discard pile. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten bursts in Tachyon's trash. The Lightspeed Barrage deals damage equal to the number of bursts in her trash. So we'll go ahead and play that. With the bonus, deal 14 damage to Baron Blade, dropping him down to 4 health. Let's go ahead and peek at the top card. Um, no, no, we do not want to discard this card. We want to keep that. Because each player draws a card, and then she gets to play another card. It's basically free. Alright, so now we have Wraith. So we'll go ahead and play the... Uh, Utility Belt. This lets her use a bonus power. Now, the thing of it is, um, you're only allowed to use one copy of a power per turn. So I can't Throwing Knives twice, basically. But we can Throwing Knives Baron Blade for 5 damage. Which defeats Baron Blade! Except not. Now he basically flips over to his alternate side and is healed back up to 30. Now... Since we stopped the Terra Lunar Implosion Beam, he's now basically like, oh, well now I need to actually fight you. So he's actually going to start actively dealing damage. Alright, so, but we'll still keep the bonus uh, damage out. And we got, oh, this is bad. Okay, well, we need to start discarding our... Uh, because this is going to be 5, 6, 7 damage per person. That's... Ooh, actually, Absolute Zero is not going to destroy anything. Um, Wraith can blow up... Uh, we can blow up her Throwing Knives, because she has another one. And then Bunker can blow up his Grenade Launcher, because we have another one of those. Alright, so we'll go ahead and let Absolute Zero take 6 damage from the River of Lava which is going to cause his isothermic transducer to react, and now he gets to deal 10 damage to whoever he wants to. Now, he can hit Baron Blade for a third of his remaining health, or he can hit himself and heal back up to near full. I think, though, uh, hitting Baron Blade and ending this is the more appropriate action. So we'll go ahead and chunk Baron Blade for a bunch of damage. Um, unfortunately, Tachyon is going to be taking a ton because she has no damage reduction, and so is Legacy. So now it is Blade's turn. So he has the Backlash field. First time he takes damage each turn, he hits back. And then Baron Blade is going to hit Wraith for 5 damage. And that's it. He just hits the highest health hero. Alright, so now it is Legacy's turn. Okay, so let's go ahead and just bolster allies so everybody gets to draw a card. We don't care the order. Alright. And then Legacy is going to boost damage. And we do not want to discard any cards. Alright, um, yes, we want to blow up the recharge mode. Because we want to play cards. So we'll go ahead and play upgrade mode. What this does, um, Bunker still skips his powers, but now he gets to play two cards per turn. So we'll go ahead and play the grenade launcher, get that back out. And then he gets to draw his card. And that's all he has, so we do not want to discard any cards. Absolute zero. Nails Baron Blade for another six damage. And then he takes five lightning from Baron Blade, which kind of hurts. But that's okay, because now we can go Horrorfire. Actually, wait a minute, let me see. 
yeah. So we'll go ahead and play this. Um, he will hit... So he he needs two shots. Um, he's going to deal cold damage first, so we'll go ahead and have him hit himself for cold to heal himself. So he regains seven health. Now he's going to hit Baron Blade for six fire. Then he hits himself for one cold and one fire. So he's going to regain more health, and then he's going to hit himself again for fire, which is going to hit him for another four damage. Oh, look, he gets to dump another 8 damage at Baron Blade, which is exactly enough to finish him off. And thus we win. So that is Sentinels of the Multiverse, in, uh, that is the basic game of Sentinels of the Multiverse, in a nutshell. Now, of course, there are four villains uh, and four environments, so we're going to be... I'm going to be doing all the remaining villains on this tonight, so this isn't going to be the only episode. Stay tuned, guys. I'll be back in a little bit.